The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan of TheMorganReport.com for the week ending 4 March 2022. Well, deep breath, what a week. Stock markets around the world are showing signs of uncertainty, and obviously the Russian stock market has gotten creamed along with their currency, the ruble. And we've written about that in the latest edition of the premium service, the paid service for the Morgan Report. In fact, in that, uh, the quote that I used this month for what's going on geopolitically is, all wars are bankers' wars. And then if you really want to be objective about anything, especially in the financial system, is to follow the money. And then lastly, the first thing to perish in war is truth. So on that basis, I did my best to put out as much objective information as possible. I'm sure I will probably ruffle the feathers of many, even my own premium service people. But uh, it's, again, trying to be objective. I'm not taking sides. I can't take a side in a war. No one really benefits. But regardless, let's move on. So the news, of course, isn't too much the stock markets, although I could dwell on that. If you start looking at the top stock guys, they're talking about stocks in an ETF format, in other words, commodities, because you can buy stocks that represent commodities. So uh, and I'll talk about both. West Texas crude <clears throat> reached an 11 year high. Grain prices were hitting multiple year highs. The commodity rally is broad based. If you look at the GCA, <clears throat> GSCI commodity index, uh, this was a Goldman Sachs one, I believe. That one is pushing vertically. Almost all these things are. If you look at the corn market, you look at the wheat market, you look at the soybean market, you look at the uh, gas market, the commodities indexes, it's all just parabolic. Things are going straight up. I will say anything that goes straight up doesn't necessarily go straight down, but usually they exhaust at some point. My take at this realm would be they will continue, probably higher, led by energy. And secondly, when the correction uh, occurs, it will give up some of the spike high, but it will settle at a higher price. And I think that's going to be pretty much across the board, meaning oil, meaning the grains or the foodstuffs, uh, just about everything that we depend on. It is a new world. It is unlike uh, anywhere we've been before. And it's a good time to try to stay grounded because there's a lot of information, disinformation, and misinformation. So it's tough to keep your bearings but uh, it can be accomplished. So in this weekly perspective, I want to focus on uh, what's hit the um, the internet <clears throat> the last day or two, and that is that Russia's going back on a gold standard. Uh, that may be, I've written about it in my report. I'm not going to change what I wrote, um, but uh, this is more or less conjecture at this point, and I'll tell you why that's my perspective. I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying it's not a done deal yet. So there is a lot going on. This is from RT, Russia Today. This is um, on Peter Schiff's website or Blink from there, I believe. Uh, Schiff's tweet is up here. Silver's up 13%. Oh, well, Bitcoin's only up two. You say silver is the new Bitcoin, uh, except with direct with utility. So while Bitcoin bugs are dreaming about Bitcoin going to the moon, they're missing a real moonshot in silver. We'll see. I'm a, one of the biggest silver bulls out there. But, um, you know, one day doesn't make a market. The old Russia going back to a gold standard, as far as I could tell, emanated from uh, Hal Turner's radio show. And this was posted, in fact, I read this at wee hours this morning. And he remarks that in one fell swoop, Russia has just made the Russian ruble the single most stable currency in the entire world. Moreover, they just effed the US dollar and euro so badly that neither currency is likely to survive. These are really strong words. I'm not saying I agree with you. I'm reading it to you. Nobody around the world will favor a U.S. dollar backed by nothing from a nation $30, 30000000000000 trillion in debt versus a gold-backed ruble. There's a lot of merit in what he says there. Think I'm kidding? Think again. He talks about what's happened in the past when some of these other governments tried to go on a gold or a euro, and they were killed, and sometimes their gold was taken from them. But that's just an article. So I tried to back this up and show everybody it's valid or invalid. So here's what I found. Okay, so here we go. This is the hardcore evidence, daily news, not, not the BBC or Reuters, but 
the value added tax on the purchase of bullion of precious metals in Russia. Russia has abolished the VAT on the purchase of precious metals by bullion. Russia's state Duma has passed a law abolishing the 20% VAT on the purchase of precious metals and ingots by individuals. So that's a fact. And I've verified that in a couple of places. So that's a huge value added tax that no longer exists for Russians to buy physical gold. So to take a look at the other side here, this comes from none other than the Financial Times. I think everyone that follows my work has a pretty good idea who actually publishes that. And of course, their title of the article, Gold Fetishism Has Had Its Day, Money Isn't an Asset, It's a Privilege. Isn't that nice to know? So this uh, professor, I guess, was interviewed or had something to do with this article. And it talks about, it kind of disses gold in the article. Basically, it says that the uh, fetish of gold has been one that Russia has held, but it really doesn't have intrinsic value. That means value in and of itself. They try to dismiss that. They talk the same thing about the silver market. It was used for decoration, but doesn't really mean that it has what we would call intrinsic value. It was useful but not necessarily value in and of itself. What's interesting about this, in my perspective, is uh, not surprised that the Financial Times would diss gold, especially during times like this when there seems to be a run to gold starting. And secondly, what they don't tell you is that the holdings by central banks is at a 31-year high. So it's the old adage, watch what they do, not what they say. As they're collecting more and more gold, for money of last resort, at least that's what has been proven to be time and time again under financial uncertainty and financial collapses, you should go back to gold. Uh, this article comes out and tells the masses that don't worry, nothing to see here, go back to sleep. And lastly, this last paragraph may be worth mentioning here. People awfully mistake money as an asset. That's an old fetish. The money represents value. When it needs to be earned. Well, that's funny. How come the bankers get to print it up for free if it has to be earned? Hmm, that doesn't apply equally across the board, does it? Well, let's move on. What ultimately makes a currency secure is credibility, the confidence of others. That I agree with. It's a con game. It's a confidence game. It's all it is when you're on a fiat system. That will depend on whether a government observes laws and conventions. Well, isn't that interesting? Money isn't a shared illusion. It's rather a series of agreements and customs among and within countries. Violating some of these agreements can shed other rest, destroying the privilege of money. A massive violation of norms can produce a massive loss of value, and a fortress of reserves offers no protection. Well, that's been uh, negated in, in times past. Does that guarantee it will reemerge in the future? It does not. Which leads me to go ahead and conclude here with, is Russia going back on the gold standard? And I would say it remains to be determined. But I do think uh, that's a possibility. I did write about it in the report, as I just said. And there's been talk years ago, I mean, like uh, not 20, but 15, about a gold-backed yuan. And of course, there are cryptocurrencies that are gold-backed uh, and that type of thing, which I'll get to here in a moment. All right, I'm going to finish with this. This came in my email box today, and the subject line was bank account seizure, action required. This came from the Load Project, and I am an ambassador for the Load Project and have been involved with it pretty much from the inception. So now that you know that I am involved, I will read this and give you an idea. So events are occurring around the world that Many people never thought would happen during their lifetime, bank account seizures, and of course we're talking around the world, but you know, particularly hitting the Canadians hard here recently. Frozen assets are taking place in G7 countries. These actions could be viewed as justifiable if directly linked to terrorist funding or other nefarious activities. However, government's overreach has exerted a new level of control denying due process to individuals by blocking access to their own financial resources and therefore or thereby punishing them for exercising basic human rights in support of a cause. What kind of a parallel universe are we living in? Even in Europe, instability is reaching inconceivable levels that will undoubtedly bring severe financial repercussions to its citizens. 
And the bottom line is that people worldwide are being financially suppressed and the vast majority have no viable alternative to protect their wealth in the future. And that's not necessarily 100% true. So even though I'm with Lode, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> give that 100% backing. Of course, you can buy physical metals. You can own an asset of some type that's valuable to others, you know, if you're growing food. So I won't belabor that. Lode does offer a solution. I'd agree with that. That's not the only one. As the world's first digital silver and gold stable money system, and it is a money system, it's not just a derivative. Many of these cryptos that are backed by gold and silver are derivatives. Why are they derivatives? Because you're buying gold or silver, but you can only exit in fiat. That isn't a real monetary system. A monetary system involves money. Money is gold and silver. Agree with me or not, I don't care. What you're doing with a crypto is you want to be able to exchange it for what you want, which if you want fiat, you have that option. But if you want the metal, you have that option with load. You don't always have that option. There's only one other that does actual metal. So moving on, load can be re can restore, can not will restore your financial freedom, safeguard your wealth by using loads, asset backed digital currencies with places your assets in your control. The world is experiencing a colossal undermining of faith in traditional banking systems. Well, it's been my life's work that uh, we had to get away from this banking fraud, and here it is. Of course, it's, it's going to be very ugly how this unravels, whether the whole thing is orchestrated, as I alluded to in my report, or not, cannot be determined by us mere mortals, at least not at this point. The masses have been awakened. Are you ready to be part of the new movement? Now is the time to explore your options, and load is a powerful option. Take the first steps today. So how do you take the first steps? So how do you find out more? Well, it is pretty easy. All you need to do is go to AG, the symbol for silver, dot L-O-D-E, load, dot O-N-E. That's a URL. Enter that, and you come here to the landing page. And I would suggest you just scroll down and watch the first video here, Imagine. Um, I'm not gonna play the whole thing because playing the video within a video doesn't always work that well, but it's got some pretty important message here. Imagine a world where your money is protected by a standard that has stood the test of time. Imagine a system where your money is worth more than its weight in silver. Imagine that you, along with millions of like-minded precious metal enthusiasts, now have access to a powerful tool that enables the construction of sound money for everyone. I'll leave it there. So when you are on this website, what you can do is get <clears throat> involved without spending any money whatsoever. You just get on the mailing list. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, stay informed, sign up for the new, uh, load newsletter. And if you really want to get involved, you can, I would suggest, as always, start small. In other words, there's two ways to get involved. It's explained on this web page. You can be on the load system where you contribute metal and you get a part of the business, sort of, sort of similar to a stock investment. I'll say similar. I want to be careful with my financial language here. And then the AGX and the AUX are the tokens, tokenized gold, tokenized silver. And again, it's explained here on this landing page. You can scroll down and read it. But as I said, if you're just curious, the best thing to do, and I'm probably going too fast, is to scroll down to the bottom and uh, sign up for the newsletter. This is what the wallet looks like on your phone. It's a little more than that, depending, but you can see what your wallet's balance is. How much of this 32,000 is in uh, USD is 523,000. Uh, how much is in silver? And it shows you 3.2K, shows you the dollar value at this point in time, which it varies how much is in gold, how much ether this particular person has, and what this person contributed to the load side, meaning they contributed silver to the project and that they have this much in the load side of the of the ledger which does produce these tokens uh, as time marches forward so all right so i'm done that's it for this week's perspective 
Remember, there's nothing more powerful than the truth. And the truth is we are in precarious times. Plan accordingly. This is David Morgan, themorganreport.com.